We will first draw a free body diagram showing the forces acting on the roller coaster car when it is located at the top of this circular path. We have the downward acting gravitational force, which we can label as mg, and then we have the surface of the track pressing up on the roller coaster car, and we will call that the normal force, f subscript n. We next turn to a version of Newton's second law, which tells us that the net centripetal force, f, is equal to the mass of the roller coaster cart multiplied by its speed squared divided by the radius. It's important to note that this quantity v squared divided by r is also known as the centripetal acceleration. So sometimes you'll see this equation written as m times a subscript c and the subscript c would indicate a centripetal acceleration. Now the centripetal acceleration is directed towards the center of curvature of the particle's path. So what that means is that the roller coaster cart's centripetal acceleration would be pointing towards the center of this circle. And in this diagram, we can see that the center of the circle would be right here. So the centripetal acceleration is pointing downward in this diagram. And what we will do in this question is assume that the downward direction is negative and the upward direction is positive. So now we're going to apply this Newton's second law equation. We'll write it one more time over here. So the net centripetal force equals the mass times speed squared divided by the radius. Now, the net centripetal force will be coming from two forces. We have the positive normal force, and to that we will add the negative mg force. Notice mg is negative because it's pointing downward. Also notice that because the centripetal acceleration is pointing downward, then it has to have a negative value. And the only way to make that a negative value is to include a negative sign in front of our quantity here. Because again, this v squared over r, that is the centripetal acceleration. But we need to make it negative because it's pointing down. So we will write this as negative mv squared divided by radius. And since we are asked to solve for normal force, we will solve this equation for the normal force. We're adding a negative quantity here, so we can write this as Fn minus mg. And then to solve for Fn, we will go ahead and add mg over to the other side. These will cancel out here, and so we can now see that the normal force will equal negative mv squared over r plus mg. And if you'd like, you can even factor out the mass because it's a greatest common factor. So we would have mass multiplied by negative v squared over r plus g. Now we will plug in the known values. The mass of the roller coaster cart is given as 1,200 kilograms. The speed v is given as 11 meters per second for the first half of this question. So we'll have 11 meters per second, and then don't forget to square it, divided by the radius of this circular path, which is 18 meters. And then to that we will add g, which is of course 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's pick up our calculators and process this calculation. And when we do so, we can see the normal force comes out to approximately 3693 newtons. So this would be the correct answer for the magnitude of the normal force and the direction, whether it's up or down, will be upward as indicated in our free body diagram. And so the correct answer for part B would be upward. So we can move on to parts C and D. And in those parts of the question, we are now assuming a different speed. So this time, the speed has been increased to 14 meters per second. We're going to leave our free body diagram in the same manner. So right now, we're assuming the normal force is still pointing upward. Let's apply the equation that we obtained in parts A and B, this equation. And we'll see how the normal force works out. So we're going to once again say that the normal force is equal to the mass times negative speed squared over radius plus g. But we'll simply change the value of the speed. So the mass will be the 1,200 kilograms multiplied by negative. This time the speed is 14 meters per second. We'll square it, divide that by the radius, and then add g to that value. 
and then we'll punch that into our calculators. And what's interesting is in this case, we get a negative answer for the normal force. So we get negative 13.07 newtons approximately. And the fact that we now have a negative sign on our normal force indicates that our initial assumption that the normal force was pointing upward was actually incorrect. So for parts C and D, essentially we have to go back and modify our free body diagram. So the gravitational force is still pointing straight down, of course. But this time the normal force is also going to be pointing straight down. And we know that because it came out negative. So for part C, the magnitude of the normal force would be 1307 newtons. But the direction for the normal force in part D would be downward.